Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today it's time for another Grand Line Review mega video because we are here to tackle the incredibly huge topic of discerning the top 20 best Devil Fruit users in the series. That's right, Devil Fruit users, not the Devil Fruits themselves. We've already done that. But exactly how are we going to do this? Well, in order to embark on this journey, I created a list of all 141 known Canon Devil Fruit users, assigned them scores based on various criteria, which I will outline, and then I simply pressed a button that showed me the 20 highest scores, which I'll be presented in this video. And I want you to know right here and now, there are some characters that I never ever would have predicted on my own. Some very surprisingly good Devil Fruit users coming your way. Before we do that though, please do help me justify my life choices of ranking 141 fictional fruit nomers by subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. It's a very win-win situation, you see. And please do comment below if you're a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. Now, before we do the, uh, the list thing, we need to go through the method methodology section, that's right. It's just like high school science. We need to understand what we're doing before we turn on the Bunsen burners, otherwise you'll burn down the science department. But for those of you who are not interested in the methodology and just want to get right into the list, then I understand and you can skip to this time here. However, I would highly encourage you to stay. And for your benefit, we will have a slideshow of provocative Robin images playing on loop in the bottom corner here. So just keep your eyes on that for a minute or two whilst I have a conversation with the adults. So what I've done this time around is very similar to my best and worst Devil Fruits list. I have a series of four categories to judge each Devil Fruit user by, and in each of those, they shall receive a score out of 10. Those four scores will then be added up to a total out of 40, and that then converted into a total out of 100, which will be our final score. How does 40 become 100, you ask? Maths, that's how. But I'm doing that purely because it's much easier to convey how good a fruit user is by saying, say, 92 out of 100, as opposed to 37 out of 40, the latter of which holds much less tangible meaning. Now, what are these categories? Well, we shall begin with usage. This is designed to measure how well a fruit wielder applies their powers to their chosen goals or profession in life. So for example, if they're a fighter like Luffy, then we'd be judging this category mostly through his combat application. However, if they were a different primary user like say Caesar, who dedicates his fruit to twisted clown science, then we'd be judging it on how well Caesar uses it in that chosen field. Next up though, we have creativity, a category designed to measure how innovative a character is with their fruit abilities. Because some people manage to find really intriguing ways to apply their powers, whilst others very much stick to vanilla benefits and don't really try to push beyond that. After which point, we come to intelligence, which measures how well a person is capable of implementing their abilities in any given situation, which might be confusing at first. I can already hear people asking, well, what's the difference between creativity and intelligence? And to answer that, here's Foxy. He is by far one of the most innovative, intriguing, and just creative Devil Fruit users in the entire series, but he's also a moron. So he manages to find really interesting ways to creatively use his fruit, but they are not intelligent applications. So that is the difference. And our final category is mastery, which is designed to measure experience and comprehensive skill sets. So for example, an awakened Devil Fruit user will automatically score quite highly in mastery, whereas a character like Kaku, who ate his Devil Fruit like five minutes before using it to fight, would receive a pretty terrible score because he was a decent general user, but he had a distinct level of inexperience. So he would score pretty terribly for mastery. And once again, those four category scores were added together and converted into a number out of 100 to produce our final placements. And as for one more caveat, because we needed to perform, you know, an extensive examination, certain Certain characters were excluded due to not meeting a standard of required information. This includes figures like Basil Hawkins, who at the time of this recording, well, we still aren't quite sure how his fruit powers work, and thus it's extraordinarily difficult to judge him as a Devil Fruit user. Same thing with Kaido, actually, as us manga readers will be well aware of by now, and some minor characters like Sharingru, who we just haven't seen enough of to judge. I'm not going to say all of them, but there were indeed necessary exceptions. But with that out of the way, let's begin this crazy exploration with our 20th best Devil Fruit user in the series, Charlotte Lin Lin. As an Emperor of the Sea, it's very difficult to grant her anything less than a 10 for usage because the Soros Horonomy is a perfect ability to create and maintain a terrifying Disney empire, as well as amplify Linlin's already monstrous physical power. She's also incredibly creative with her soul manipulation given her childlike imagination. And in fact, she only loses points in mastery because Linlin is not a confirmed awakened Devil Fruit user. She certainly could be, but until we know for sure, I cannot award her a perfect 10. What does let Linlin down though pretty massively is obviously intelligence. Big Mom is a lot smarter smarter than many people give her credit for, but not that much smarter. She's quite heavily flawed here and will often not use her abilities in the most intelligent of ways. It's more likely that Lin Lin will wield her power dictated by emotion alone, and that factor alone is enough to sink her all the way down to number 20. To number 19 though, we have Spawn of Big Mother and Sweet Commander, Charlotte Cracker. And this was the first of many shocks for me. When you think about Cracker, your first thought is probably something along the lines of, mmm, biscuits. But delving into him as a fruit user, he's actually kind of astonishing. The Beast of 
Yusu no Mi has put his elected use, I would say quite perfectly as a sweet commander. He has an incredible range of creativity, especially when it comes to all of the armors he designs and constructs. Plus he's also quite above average in terms of intelligence. And as for mastery, once again, he's not a confirmed awakened fruit user. So that's going to shave off a point or two. And if Big Mom's mastery was a nine, then I can't quite put Cracker on that level because their experience is too radically different. Doesn't matter though, Cracker has still topped his voracious mother. So good on him. That was, that was a surprise. For number 18 now, we have Marco the Phoenix who does quite well all around. He's a very clever little birdie having displayed sound strategic mind and profound mastery of the Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix that could only be topped if he had awakened it. And it's a controversial topic regarding whether or not mythical fruits can be awakened to begin with. And if so, it's entirely possible that Marco has already done it, but we don't know, so eh. Marco's elected usage is also great as well. As a commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, Marco branched it to make it all the way to the status of right hand bird, as well as augmenting his combat prowess. And in modern times, he's even become a doctor with the healing flames. Creativity is the only thing that Marco doesn't quite get flying colors for. Nothing I've seen from Marco has really struck me as left field or unique. I mean, he's still kind of creative, but we have and will continue to see better. Not in number 17 though, which will be Kuzan and the Hear Hear to me. Kuzan's creativity is also a seven because what he does is fairly standard cookie cutter freezing shenaniganry. However, in exchange, Kuzan was awarded a perfect score in usage because being either an admiral of the Marines or prominent Grand Line loner, either way, he's very well suited to sea travel or sea combat. As a tactical masterminding admiral type, Kuzan is also an easy nine for intelligence, perhaps some room to improve, but not too much. And the mastery of eight mainly comes down to what we've seen of him. It could be greater to be honest, but as of right now, there are things left to be desired, but still a very solid score as expected of an admiral. An idea which will continue on to Kuzan's main rival and now fleet admiral Sakazuki, and his stats actually match Kuzan's perfectly. As such, I almost feel like everything I said about Kuzan can be applied to Sakazuki. However, I will take this opportunity to state that whenever I encountered a tie in total score, I made the decision in regards to ranking at my own discretion. And in this case, Sakazuki ranks higher than Kuzan because he demonstrably topped him in their clash on Ponkazid. As Devil Fruit users, I do think they're pretty perfectly equal, but Sakazuki did inch it out on that one occasion, so I see no reason why he shouldn't here as well. For our third admiral candidate in a row, we now move to number 15, where we find ourselves a Wisteria Tiger, Fujitora. His stats are pretty similar to the other two admirals with one important change, being that Fujitora scores a perfect 10 for intelligence rather than usage. And this is because Fujitora is a demonstrable schemer and the degree of thought that he puts into his actions and his fruit does, in my opinion, at least trump that of Sakazuki, who in a very big mum way is more governed by emotion, just well, nowhere near as badly. And as for the Zushi Zushi no Mi, it's actually slightly less desirable to be applied as an admiral than the more versatile Ice and Magma Logias respectively. Still, he does end up with the same score as the others on 85 and so here he is. Finally moving up in numbers though, we find ourselves with one Trafalgar Law with a very specific score of 86.25. And why not? Law is insane in every way. Currently looking at these numbers, he's one of the most well-rounded users on this list with highly above average intelligence, a streak of surprising introverted creativity and a knack for being able to apply this weird ability to just about any goal he needs to meet. Although to be fair, the Ope Ope no Mi is quite naturally versatile. In terms of mastery though, we are losing a couple of points for not being awakened as well as the idea that Law has not yet reached the pinnacle of its power via the perpetual youth surgery. And he probably never wants to either because it will kill him, but it's very hard to say that one has mastered their fruit abilities without actually having performed all of said abilities. So yeah. In number 13 now, we have another surprise candidate because here's Emporio Ivankov. Another one that I would not have picked if I was just constructing a random list in my head thing, but he is absolutely the perfect user of the Horu Horu no Mi. Who else could have been given the hormone abilities and be anywhere near as effective than Ivankov? Creativity, well, you just take one look at this man and tell me that he does not exist at the pinnacle of creativity. I mean, he once used his mascara to block Magellan's poison. We are not dealing with the average mind here, which is relevant because he's also quite intelligent, which I think is often masked by pure flamboyance, but he is notably smart. And with mastery, like many others, I just want to see an awakening and we can talk about bumping up that score. Otherwise, I think Ivankov's done about as well as anyone can. Meanwhile, in number 12, we have Sir Crocodile, a man who is probably one of the finest Logia users we've ever seen in the series with probably the most unfortunate of natural weaknesses. That doesn't stop Crocodile from turning the power of sand and sand accessories into a fantastic benefit for himself. Notably having used a combination of intelligence and creativity to spark an entire civil war, all in pursuit of an ancient weapon. In fact, the only reason why he doesn't have a perfect 10 for intelligence is because he does get quite arrogant, which can, at times, cancel out all of the well-calculated thoughts he's had. Quite unfortunate there, Crocoboy. But even though he was beaten by Luffy on 
Alabaster, Crocodile is still absolutely one of the best Devil Fruit users that we have ever encountered. Although many newcomers have since threatened that position, one of which is the shockingly effective Bello Betty. This is an example of a Devil Fruit user and a fruit that we're just destined to be. As a member of the Revolutionary Army armed with the Koba Koba no Mi, which increases the fighting spirit and strength of others, there can be nothing but a perfect 10 in usage. Of course, to even implement it effectively in the first place, Bello Betty needs super special intelligence to select the right words and psychologically manipulate people, which we have seen a very solid mastery of. All I think we lack right now is superb creativity, which might be difficult to judge because we've only seen a little bit of her in action, but that's what we have to go by. And I guess what I'm saying is, as a fruit user, she could easily rise and be placed in the top 10 in the future. But as for the top 10 right now, we shall begin with Bartholomew Kuma, who with the combined intelligence of man and cyborg together being known as a manborg, will score a perfect 10 in the smart region. Kuma is so absurdly strategic and perfect when implementing his abilities, it puts almost everyone else to shame, really. But he also has wild creativity because who else would even think to try to push away abstract concepts such as pain? And as a master, just awaken him and we are all good. But finally, for general usage, as a warlord of the sea, he's dedicated this fruit power pretty exceptionally. And there's not much more to say, except I hope that Mr. Kuma is okay, but he's probably not. In number nine now, we have the candidate who surprised me the most by far, because let's all say hi to Stroysen, the head chef of the Big Mom Pirates with a very unique fruit ability known as the Kuku Kuku no Mi, which allows its user to turn objects into food. Pretty much a match made in heaven for a chef, as well as a prominent member of the Big Mom Pirates who are highly food focused. In terms of creativity, he is a gourmet artiste. This fruit is the paint to Stroysen's canvas. And whilst he may be an undeniably wild psychopath, he is also very intelligent, having basically forged his own empire by manipulating and corrupting Charlotte Lin Lin. And as far as one can possibly take the Kuku Kuku no Mi without awakening it, I think Stroysen has done just that. Is it the best fruit? <laughs> oh no. But has Stroysen made the best of a weird situation and used this fruit to its full potential? Absolutely. And that's why he is almost certainly one of the best devil fruit users within this entire strange, strange series. In terms of number eight though, we have a very familiar face, one Monkey D. Luffy, our future pirate king and current rabid brat. With that said, I'm not at all surprised to see Luffy here. Of all of the fruit users in the series, we are most intimately familiar with how he has taken and evolved the Goma Goma no Mi to become a much more dangerous and versatile ability than anyone could have ever predicted. Also, creativity is Luffy's forte. Having all of that important childlike imagination that we have referenced already with Charlotte Lin Lin, but Luffy also comes comes equipped with the intelligence to back that up. No, seriously, in combat, he is a mad genius. Luffy's mind works in very strange ways, and it seems to be optimized for the incredibly specific task of defeating powerful enemies. And by the end of the series, I suspect that Luffy will be able to climb the ranks here quite significantly. But for now, let's move to number seven, where we find Marshall D. Teach, an absolute aberration of science and dentistry, and also a unique presence on this list. You'll notice that despite not being an Awakened Devil Fruit user, he has a perfect 10 for mastery. And and this is simply because I would find it ridiculous to give him anything less than a 10, given that he is the only person in this world who has managed to acquire two Devil Fruit abilities. That's pretty damn masterful as a user. But just as with many others, the only thing I feel like Teach is really lacking is creativity. He is a very straightforward man who enjoys letting fate take the wheel after copious planning and implementation, but still, it's weird to get to that moment of truth and just go, well, what happens, happens. He doesn't really push his thinking into the bounds of creativity too much, which is a shame because he may very well top this list if he did. Instead, on this occasion, Blackbeard is going to have to surrender to the might of Caesar Clown because, wow, what an underrated fruit user. Another example of the perfect vessel for the fruit, as Caesar applies the Gasa Gasa no Mi flawlessly to the field of science. Terrifying chemical weapon-based science, but science nonetheless. He has high scores in intelligence and mastery because he is the only known character in the series to have permanently augmented his own devil fruit abilities. Because whatever the Gasa Gasa no Mi originally was, look, we'll probably never know, but Caesar is an artificial evolution of it. And he's also quite creative because who else would think to whip out a pair of castanets and use them in an attack known as gastanets? Not you, not me, and probably not you again, only clown. Although someone who may have come up with such an idea but then thought better of it is our fifth place finisher, Nico Robin. I've always maintained that Robin is one of the better of the users in the series. We just, you know, so very rarely get to see her in action. In her hands, pun intended, the Hana Hana no Mi is a wealth of clever, creative, and masterful implementation. A nigh on perfect user really, only losing points in usage because Oda just avoids having her actually wield the fruit to Robin's full potential. And then some loss of points in mastery because of the whole not being awakened thing. That really has held a lot of candidates back here today. And I will admit, if you are not an awakened Devil Fruit user, it was very difficult to score above.
above an eight for mastery. And that's because people like our fourth place finisher, Don Quixote Do Flamingo, happen to exist. He has managed to awaken his Ito Ichinomi and as a result gets an automatic 10 for mastery because what more can you really do? Do Flamingo has pushed this thing to its absolute limits, also garnering perfect tens in usage and creativity. He is absolutely amazing with one grand exception being intelligence. When I mentioned that Crocodile lost points here for arrogance, Doflamingo makes Crocodile look humble. Having mastered his powers to their full potential, Doflamingo becomes quite neglectful of using them in the most efficient possible way, which is best observed in his chaotic downfall during the events of the Dressrosa Rock. And unfortunately, in our quest to find the bestest, sharpest, devil, fruitiest user, we cannot ignore this, and the Heavenly Demon will have to settle for fourth. Which is good, because at the very least, he does not upset our third place finisher, Edward Newgate, a man who you would really like to stay on the right side of, a former Emperor of the Sea and of course close rival of Goldie Roger. Whitebeard's usage of the Gura Goronomi is a clear 10, and in addition to this, our curvy moustached fellow was also a master tactician of Sengoku levels and was always able to use his powers at their most effective. I would struggle to call Whitebeard supremely creative, like I think he had a lot of nice utility options he developed, but I don't think he quite had the mind to extract the full potential in this category. And for mastery, well, until we hear that he was an awakened user, my hands are kind of tied here and forced to knock off a point. Bam, go away, point. But a real question now becomes, who ended up beating Whitebeard? Well, that would be a lovable reindeer, Tony Tony Chopper in second place. And no, I am not joking. Chopper is by far the most underrated devil fruit user in this series. And a lot of that may be the luck of the draw with a reindeer eating the Hito Hitchnomi, but Chopper has made more from his abilities than really almost anyone else I can think of. To this day, he is the only non-mythical Zoan user to have found access to forms beyond the initial three human, beast, and hybrid options. His medicinal intelligence and childlike wonder together have resulted in this fantastic exploration that nobody else would be capable of. I mean, Chopper even pushed this idea so far that he had awakened his devil fruit long before the Straw Hats had even arrived on Drum Island. Although it did take him quite a while to control it, but he did. And as such, there's a nice 10 in mastery here for Chopper, as well as every other high score because Chopper is phenomenal and as a devil fruit user, he answers to only one man, who is our first place finisher, Charlotte Katakuri. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to give Katakuri a perfect score for all four categories, but I was forced to because I simply could not think of any reason why he would lose points in any of them. In terms of usage, he's perfect. In terms of creativity with the Mochi Mochi Numi, perfect. His ridiculous intelligence and implementation of the powers, perfect. And for mastery, well, he's obviously an awakened user, so perfect again. Which does make sense because all his life, Katakuri strove to be the perfect being. And in terms of Devil Fruit usage, I would say he absolutely accomplished that. Of course, that doesn't mean he can't be defeated by, say, a less than perfect monkey man, but that is for other reasons. Whereas in the context of this discussion, I can't deny this man a perfect 100 out of 100 because Charlotte Katakuri, you are the very major model of a modern major Devil Fruit user. You are one superb mofo. But if you want another deep dive into the sphere of One Piece, then I'd highly recommend you check out my top 20 best Devil Fruits video, which just examines the fruits themselves. Otherwise, please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.